Hello everyone, and welcome to the Thriftfield Prince. I'm Ken Johnson, and I will be your guide as we journey to become better artists together. Let me tell you a little bit about the channel. I started this channel so that there would be a resource available to anyone that was interested in starting their journey into the arts with watercolor products. And we will hopefully bring you budget-friendly options across all grades um, to help make the experience fun, while we focus on teaching many valuable lessons um, geared towards the beginner, novice, and intermediate level artist. Every video will include an activity of knowledge, and with any luck, uh, this will turn out to be a wonderful learning experience for all of us. So we're not going to waste any more time. We're going to go ahead and jump right into it. The very first video is going to be a review slash lesson because I do want to introduce you all to products that you can go ahead and get started with, especially if this is your very first time. So in order to get started in the watercoloring, you're going to need three things specific, specifically. Excuse me. Um, you're going to need watercolor paper. Um, it comes in all different sizes, small, all the way up to big, 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 big sheets. Um, it does come in different grades, just like all the other products, but we'll talk more about that as we uh, go on, you know, with different videos of the channel. You're going to need brushes, uh, watercolor brushes. Uh, you can purchase them at a lot of different places from ordering them online from Amazon to your local craft store. Um, I've even seen brushes inside of Walmart. And you're going to need paint. Paint comes in many different forms. The paint that you see before you is tube paint. It also comes in cakes, uh, liquid. They even have watercolor markers and pencils as well. So there are many different forms, but we're going to concentrate mainly on the paints on this particular channel. We will be reviewing markers and and um, pencils as well, but it won't be as much as we do the paints, but they are to come. So now that we know what products we're gonna need or what materials we need in order to get started as a beginner, let's talk about brands. Um, I decided to do this first video as a review as well, instead of just um, a basic beginner learning technique video, because I wanted to go ahead and start, you know, putting the information out there so that you guys will have it so that when you're out shopping for your watercolors, you can make a more informed decision on what it is you want to buy. Um, this particular brand is Royal and Lane Nickel Essential or Essentials line of watercolors. And again, I did get the tubes. There were 12 of them in the pack. Um, these are 12 milliliter tubes and they did come in a pack with a watercolor pad and two brushes as well. I also picked up the Royal and Lang Nickel Menta, that's M-E-N-T-A, line of watercolor brushes. Um, to get this many, I had to buy two packs from the place I purchased it from, but I did want to have a good variety. Although, most of the research I've done and from practice myself, I can tell you, one good watercolor, watercolor brush will go a very, very long way. Um, you can paint a whole picture with one brush you will get so engulfed and you trust me we'll get there um and the paper that i have here is actually a nine by twelve piece that i cut in half um and this particular paper is um master's touch watercolor pad paper um by hobby lobby and i am going to go ahead and tell the brand of that one as well um hobby this is hobby lobby's house brand so I, the only places you can really get it is Hobby Lobby, or I think maybe Amazon has it as well. Uh, but yeah, this is Master's Touch watercolor pad. Um, again, nine by 12, and I just cut it in half uh, so that it'll fit the screen and we can talk about it. So now those are the products that we're gonna be reviewing today. I just wanted to introduce you to them. We're gonna go ahead and jump into the lesson, and then we'll talk more about how the products perform after the lesson. Um, but I just did want to show you the ones we're going, we're using today to review.
All right, welcome back to today's lesson. And um, I want to take a minute to first show you what a lot of artists do with the two paints when they purchase them. I mean, ultimately you make cakes out of them. So I guess it would do good to just buy cakes um, to begin with. If, if you want, you will discover as you start to paint with the different ones that you may prefer one over the other. Me personally, I like palettes, so I like to buy them in cake forms. And when I buy them in tube forms, I put them in palettes so that they'll become cakes or they'll dry out like cakes. Um, this palette is where I place my Royal and Lane Nickel tube paints. As you can see, I've been doing some practicing and I got colors in the palette and I don't really clean it um, because, you know, I can add water to those colors and they'll come back to life and I'll be able to use them in another painting, mix things into them. But um, now let's go over the colors that we have here. We have lemon yellow and I did, you know, write them on the front of my palette so that I'll be sure to remember what they are. But lemon yellow, vermilion, crimson red, this is going to be Persian blue, sap green, deep green, violet, yellow ochre, um, burnt sienna, burnt umber, black, and white. And those, that's just the names of them. Now, this particular paint did not come with any pigment colors, which as we grow, we will learn that pigment colors are, are pigment number. I'm sorry, this... I'm so sorry, this paint did not come, paint said did not come with any pigment numbers as to tell me what pigments were used to make the paint. Um, I did try to research it and Google it and look it up, but as of yet, I have not had any success. However, if I do, I will definitely um, mention that in one of the upcoming videos, or if one of you guys know how I can obtain the pigment numbers for Royal and Lane Nickel, um, paints, then please, by all means, post it in the comments and I will be more than grateful for the information and I will definitely pass it along and share it. So this is the paints that we're going to be using and in the lesson today, we are going to be two, doing two different things. We're going to one, be swatching the paints and then two, we're going to take those paints to do a color wheel. So in essence, Right out the gate, we're going directly into color mixing and we're gonna be doing a 12 color color wheel. Now I've already gone ahead and drawn out my um, swatch and my color wheel. Um, I am going to scan these into the computer and upload them and I will put them in the description section so that you guys can access them and download them. I will figure out how to get that done um, with the posting of this video. So these are the things that we're gonna do today. So first off, let's grab a, a pen here. I use, I like using Microns. They are supposedly, they do not run, they're waterproof um, and fade proof. So I like using these whenever I'm drawing out my swatch paper or anything that I'm using a permanent line for on my watercolor paper. But um, so let's see, we need to go ahead and name these in order. So I'm going to put lemon yellow. And I've actually done this backwards, but hey, we're going to make it work. Um, lemon yellow. Vermilion. Crimson, Red Lake, Prussian, Blue, we'll jump, let's see, we'll do Sap Green, that's one, two, three, four, five, one more on this side, we'll do Deep Green. Start with violet, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, black. 
black and white. All right, so we have our colors listed now. Now on the other sections is where I would actually be putting um, pigment, num pigment numbers and light fastness ratings. <clears throat> and light fastness is something that um, basically means how long the paint will hold up exposed to light. And that's what, th those are these are the things that we look for or that we're gonna be looking at when we go out to buy our paints and when we order our paints, especially as we start moving into the more uh, upper student and professional grades of paints that list that type of information. So the start off, we're going to swatch these out. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the swatch off heavy and then fade it into a medium and then into a light. So essentially that's called a gradiated wash right off the top we're going into a technique um, and because we have 12 of them to do it's going to be great practice for us to get that in secondly we'll be doing our color wheel which is where our color mixing will come in we'll be using only three colors of paints the three pi primary colors and from those primary colors we're going to make all the other colors the secondary as well as the tertiary colors so I'm going to take two seconds and run and grab myself some clean water because I was painting earlier. And when I get back, we are going to dive right in. All right, everyone, let's jump right into the first activity. Um, I want to mention that you should pre-wet your paints in the palette if you've let them dry out. Um, normally, I would just take a spray bottle, you know, a bottle of just water out the tap and spray the paints to activate them. Um, before I start to paint, but unfortunately, uh, during the break, I could not find that spray bottle for the life of me. I cannot tell you where it is, so I just went ahead and dropped um, water into each one of my paints to try to go ahead and pre-activate them. So we'll start here with the lemon yellow, and I'm just going to dip my brush in that paint, slide my palette over a little bit. And you might also want to keep a paper towel handy or definitely keep a paper towel handy for this. And I'm going to start in the first block. And I'm just going to paint in a yellow square. Then I'll rinse my brush and I'll blot it off one time on my paper towel. And then I'll go right on top of where I end it and bring it down another third of the way or and then I'll block I'll clean my brush and blot it off twice this time and then for the third time bring that square on out basically what I'm trying to do is see what it looks like strong and then as it grades out now this paint is going to take a little work here I see so I'm just going to try to Get that graded out the best I can. I mean, keep in mind, I'm just beginning in this journey just like you guys are. So, hey, I'm, we're going to do our best no matter what. So, I'll move on to the next color, which is the vermilion. And we will get a color square down. We'll rinse our brush and blot it off. Bring that color square down more. And then we'll rinse and we'll block. And we'll bring it down even more. Just so we can see how it tints the paper. Now, please, by all means, take your time with this. Um, I'm probably going to do one other one so you can see how we're doing it. And then I want to speed the video up at this point just to save a little time on the length of the video until we move into the next activity. Well, don't worry. Doing that little speed up, you won't miss a thing. But you take your time and you do it until you get all of them in. So let's do one more together. We'll do the crimson red here. And just grab some of that. I get enough paint on my brush. Can't be scared of the paint. I've had to learn that the hard way. And I'm gonna get it on there. I'm gonna rinse my brush and block once. 
and drag it on down. Then I'm gonna rinse my brush and blot it, off, blot it off twice and drag it on out to the end. I'm trying to keep it in the square, but hey, you know. As long as I get the effect so that when I refer back to this, I can see what it looks like, I'm good. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and finish and I'll speed the video up and then we'll jump right back into real time for the color wheel.
All right, so there we have it. I've swatched out all of the colors and a uh, gradiated wash. And of course, the more I do it and the more you do it, the better we're both going to get at it. And that is the whole point of growing and learning together. So uh, a couple of things um, about what went on here. I, again, don't have the, I really hate that I do not have the pigment number to put in each one of these sections nor do I have the light fast ratings to put on them. I'm going to continue to look. And again, I'm going to ask if you guys know, please go ahead and guide me in that direction so that I can add it to my chart and share it with um, everyone on a future video. So we're going to put this to the side. We're going to give it time to dry. And then we are going to go ahead and get started on activity number two, which is the color wheel. Now, for this color wheel, I just draw a circle basically out of um, masking tape, a masking tape roll, and then I divided it in half, and then each section into thirds. That way I would have 12 um, slots. You can use it, you can draw it freehand, you can do a ruler if you want it to be a little bit more precise. I was perfectly fine with this because it's just gonna be for my records, um, and I'm gonna put both of these inside an album so that I can keep track of my experience, my first experience with this particular paint. All right, so um, now for our color wheel, this is fun. This is gonna be the really fun part simply because we are about to get into some color mixing. So let's talk about this. Our three primary colors are, did anybody guess? Red, yellow, and blue. So, let's pick a spot on our color wheel, and we'll place red. And then we'll count over three. One, two, three. And then the fourth one, and I have to turn it around for me to write, guys. I'll put yellow. Then I'll count three more. One, two, three. And then the fourth one, I will put blue. And then just to make sure, I'm going to count one, two, three. And then the fourth slot is red. All right, so there. So you guys can see that? All right, now those are our three primaries. Let's do our secondaries. And you get your secondaries by mixing your primaries. Let's start on this side. So red and yellow makes what? Anybody guess? Orange. So we'll pick the middle triangle in between these two and we'll write orange all right let's move on yellow and blue we got it green so halfway between those we'll write green all right one more secondary color to go blue and red i bet you guys got that one now this one is violet, commonly known as purple. That's what a lot of people I know love to call it. It's purple. <laughs> so now we have our primary, red, yellow, blue, our secondary, orange, green, violet. Now we need to get our tertiaries and we're going more color mixing. So, in order to get the tertiaries, we're going to mix a primary with a secondary. Again, let's start on this side of the color wheel. If we mix red and orange, what do you think we get? If you guess red orange, you were right. And keep in mind, for the tertiary colors, the primary color in the mix will always be the first one named. So, here we have red orange. Moving on, now we have yellow and orange. Yep, you're right. Yellow, orange. How about yellow and green? Oh, I bet you guys are coming away. Yellow, green. Anybody guess green and blue? Blue, green. And last but not least, well, sorry, two more. Blue and violet. Yep, blue-violet. 
And last but not least, violet and red. Red violet it is. All right. So now, just the top there. Now that we have our wheel label, we can go ahead and get into color. Now we're going to be using a different technique than we did with the swatch. Now we're going to be doing what's known as a flat wash. And it's where you keep the color even all the way down to the end of what you're painting. So by the time this lesson is over, we will have mixed colors, swatched paint, did a gradiated wash, as well as a flat wash. Boy, you guys are learning really, really fast. Okay, so let's just start here. Now, it normally helps to have something to mix your paint on. If you're painting and using your paints directly out the tube right now, then you probably have them laid out on like a palette or maybe a um, clear plate from the kitchen or a saucer or um, I have found these little wonderful clear clipboards from my local Dollar General that I use as palettes because you know, the Thrifty Apprentice is always looking for the next deal so that he can continue to make great art. And um, I'm gonna show that to you guys before we end today's video. But for now, let's go ahead and get our color wheel done. So let's start with yellow. So the first thing we wanna do, I'm just gonna make sure I get up that watercolor there and I have a little spot clean. We won't speed this part up because we want to make sure that we do um, get to see all of our color mixing together. So let's start with yellow and we're just going to make a puddle of yellow here. Want to get it nice and strong. Keep in mind, the more water you add, the lighter the color is going to be. So I just want to make sure I add enough paint to it because the puddle was pretty big. And I made it big because we're going to be mixing other colors into it to paint the rest of our wheel. All right, I think that's enough. And like I said earlier, don't be scared of the paint. I mean, we'll talk about price point in the middle in a minute, but keep in mind the whole point of this channel is to bring you affordable paints or affordable ways to obtain paint. So, hey, feel free, get on there, get enough color in there. And then we will go ahead and do our yellow. I got a little something on my paper already. So we're gonna start from the top here. And we are going to paint this all the way down. Can you guys see the yes? Okay, great. Paint this all the way down. Make sure we try not to continue to go over the paper, which I mean, in this particular instance, it's gonna be hard not to, but I, cause I do wanna make sure I have it even colored. but you wanna try not to go over it like I'm doing here. And you wanna to try to keep your strokes one away. All right. I must have got, I've got paint on my hand and I'm getting it all over my little color card here. I hate that, but oh well, what do you do? It's fine. All right, so next let's move on and we will mix, oh, let's go this way. So next we're gonna mix yellow orange. Now, how do you think you mix yellow orange? Well, if you mix orange from red and yellow, then a lot of yellow and a little orange must make the yellow orange. Yeah, I know, pretty simple logic. So I'm gonna grab a little red, just a tad, just a tad, and I'm gonna mix that into my yellow. Now, as watered down as this wash is, honestly, I would probably have to do this two or three times. So I'm gonna take some yellow. I'm gonna make a little thicker paint here. So basically what I did was use more paint and less water to pick up my yellow. 
And then I'm gonna do the same thing to pick up just a little bit of red. I think I had too much there. And I'm gonna mix this because I'm looking for a yellow orange. And if your color is a little bit too one way, then mix the opposite end to bring it back. So it's a little too orange for me, so I'm gonna mix in some yellow. Still just a little bit too orange. So again, I'm gonna go back in for some more yellow and bring it in. All right, I think that's good. So we'll start here with the yellow orange. And we'll paint down evenly. I try to anyway. And if you don't want them to bleed together after painting the first one, give it time to dry because you never know what watercolor is going to do sometimes. It's a beautiful thing. All right. So this is our yellow orange. And then next we're going to try to mix a pure orange. And I think I'm going to go in for a little more red here. And we're going to try to get this to be a real orange without being a red orange. So yeah, definitely way too much red. Let's see. A little more yellow. I'm just trying to get this color just right before I put it on my wheel. I'm gonna put too much yellow in it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the back of my swatch paper. I'm just gonna test it. Uh, I don't know. I think that's going to be the best orange I get. So I added just another little touch of red. And then I'm just going to go ahead and paint that in. it in all the way down. I'm trying to move as quickly as I can because again I always have in the back of my mind the thought of not having the video be too long because I don't want you guys to get bored at all. So now we're going to move on to red orange and we're simply going to mix more red into the mixture until we get a more ready oranges color without it being red. All right, I think that's good. We'll paint it here. My eyes just fluttered a little bit. You know what that was all about. Okay. Get this one all filled in. And then we'll move on to red. Well, well that's pretty simple. We're just gonna clean our brush. Make a little puddle there. Make sure we put down enough paint because we are about to start mixing other colors. That's a lot of paint. Let's put down some water to go with it. I'm just going to grab for the sake of, because I cannot tell you where. But for the sake of, I'm just going to grab a bigger brush. It's going to hold a little water. Not much. There you go. So that mantle brush definitely holds a lot of water. All right, so we're just gonna go in with the pure red and we are going to paint it in here. We wanna to try to make sure we always get it in the right triangle. All right. 
right? And next we're gonna have red violet. So if we got violet by mixing blue, if we got violet by mixing blue and red, and then we got red violet by mixing violet and red, then to our red mixture, we need to mix blue, just a little so that we can get a red violet. All right. I don't know, let's see. I'm gonna test that out. Seems a little less red than I want it to be, so I'm gonna grab a little more red, mix it in. That way I can be sure I think that red violet will work just fine. So we're gonna go ahead and get that painted in. Now that paint is a little, has more water in it than I really intended for it to. So I'm probably gonna have to do that more than once. See if I can't. I've noticed you can move the pigment around on the paper. It doesn't necessarily flow when the water hits it, but you can definitely move it around on the paper. It reminds me of another um, paint that I've experienced since I've been testing them out so that I can know which ones to bring to you guys. All right, let's keep going with violet. We'll add more blue to get a true violet color. Without it being blue violet, hopefully. Yeah, there's definitely a blue violet. So, we need to add more red. To bring it back. Test it out. All right, there's definitely more of a violet color. Maybe just one little more touch of red. And we'll go ahead and use that for our violet. Get that painted all in. I'll leave a little gap because that paint is going to do just that bleed together. Now, some people might be okay with it bleeding together. I necessarily didn't want mine to bleed together, but you know, what can you do? It'll be fine. All right, now we need to do blue violet. And this time I am going to paint with a little gap in between the colors. Add blue, more blue to my mixture. I'm just going to test that color out. All right, I think we got a nice blue violet there. I'm just going to paint it and try to stay away from the edge. That the, I don't want that to bleed. All right. And next we can go for blue. Straight out the mama jama. <laughs> and again, I'm going to leave that little line barrier there because I don't want that to bleed. And we're just going to paint the rest of this thing.
I know I am making a lot of strokes, but this brush is not really covering the area that I thought it was going to. Or maybe I'm not using it properly, but we'll learn. Okay, so now we need blue green. And you get blue and green by making yellow. So basically we're gonna take a puddle of blue here. I'm gonna start with blue. And to the blue, we're gonna add a little yellow. Just a little. That adds a little, can you see that? All right. I'm start mixing that in to that blue. That's still blue, no doubt about it. So we're gonna grab more yellow and we have completely terminated it and mix in more. All right, that's definitely a blue green, no doubt about it. And that's a pretty one. So we're gonna go in, we're just going to get this painted in. I'm sorry guys if I'm boring, I, I hope I'm not. I hope you guys are getting something out of this already. Um, definitely. And I'm going to go ahead and say now, please feel free to use the comment comment section. I want to know what you guys have to say. I want to use your advice to grow. I want to know if you learned anything. If you didn't learn anything, did I talk too long? Did I talk too much? Was the video too long? Was the video too short? It's okay. I can handle the criticism. I'll, I ask that you please don't be mean and don't be ugly. That's all I ask. All right. So now we need to make green. We're going to add more yellow because we know that yellow and blue makes green. And we're going to try to get it to a more real green feeling. Still a little green, blue green to me. Trying to get this blue out of my yellow. I think that's going to, there we go. That's more like it. That's a green. All right. Let's get that painted in. There's our green, and now we need yellow green. So what do you think we do? Yep, you guys have been right the whole time. We add more yellow. We're trying to take it to that bright green that you see on the trees. Let's see, that's our brush we're really, really good at. That way we can jump over here on this side and this yellow. Get it mixed in there. All right. That's more the color we've been looking for. Maybe a little bit more. I don't want to take it too far. All right. And we're going to put our very last color in. Our yellow green. All right, guys, and there you have it, a 12 color color wheel, which we mixed our own colors from, the three primary colors to make. I'm going to give this time to dry, and then we'll be right back to look at both of our activities and do our final reviews and thoughts on the paints that we have. Hope you guys have fun with this.
are back and we have given our activities time to dry. Um, and now that we have, we'll take a closer look and kind of dive into the reviewing of the things we've used today. Well, first let's start with the paper. Um, I think it was a pretty okay paper. I mean, I've had a chance to use several different papers since I started my journey a couple of months back, about four or five months back now. And I've experienced in that amount of time, a lot of different um, papers and pads and weights and textures. So basically this is Master's Touch watercolor pad. It is 140 pound um, acid free paper. This is a pulp paper, so it's made from wood pulp, not from 100% cotton. Um, so it does, it is going to perform a little different. Um, this is a student grade of paper. And I think for what it's worth, it held, held its own pretty well. Um, it didn't really do a lot of buckling or anything, but we didn't, we also didn't have anything that had a lot of water added to the paper either either but um so i mean on a scale of one to five i think i would probably rate this watercolor paper about a three based on the things that i know about watercolor paper um and it is very budget friendly again this is master's touch you can obtain this particular paper from hobby lobby and you can't use one of their coupons on it but you can definitely um, get it at a great deal because they typically run their master touch and their fine touch products at 50% off. So if I'm not mistaken, I got a, um, let's see, what was it? A 15 sheet nine by 12 pad, premium watercolor pad with, that was $9.99. And then I got 50% off of it. So I paid basically five bucks for um, 15 sheets of watercolor paper, which was, in my opinion, a very good deal. Um, so you guys may want to consider that and as a starting point. Um, if you haven't already discovered a paper that you like at this particular point, I just want to make that as a suggestion. Again, I would rate that about a three on a scale of one to five. All right. So now let's move on to our brushes. <clears throat> um... I just have to tell you guys, right off, flat out, I love these brushes. For me, on a scale of one to five, these brushes are definitely a five. And of course, I'm only basing it on my experience of watercolor brushes. But these brushes are soft to the touch. They're aesthetically pleasing. They have an acrylic handle instead of wood. So if I just happen to accidentally leave them in water like I, I, I do, I must admit sometimes, I don't have to worry about the wood splitting from being from it being left in the water. Um, and they hold a lot of water. I mean, I've had to really work on my water control with these brushes and I love that because it's forcing me to get better. Um, so, you know, hands down, the paper is okay, and I definitely recommend it as a starting point. There are definitely better brushes, uh, de de definitely better paper out there that you may can get um, still in the same price point or maybe even cheaper um, that's of a better grade to use. But to start off with, the Master's Touch um, paper is pretty good. But the brushes, I definitely, without any doubt, recommend the brushes. They are very affordable. They perform really, really well. They're comfortable to hold. They're nice to look at. Um, and I have really enjoyed using them to paint with them. So without the shadow of a doubt, I definitely recommend these. Again, this is the Royal and Lane Nickel Menta, M-E-N-T-A. I think that's how they pronounce it, Menta line of brushes. Um, you can probably order them on Amazon, um, maybe Walmart. I got mine from my local Joanne's craft store. They come about four or five in a pack for $10.99. And then Joanne's is typically running like a 40% off coupon that you can obtain from their um, app or from going to joanne's.com. And I just used that on both packs. So started out 20 bucks and 
I paid just a little over 10 for, you know, several, several different brushes. Uh, and they do sell them individually. Um, just make sure that if you're buying the, even if you're buying them in the pack or if you're buying them individually, just make sure you're getting the um, watercolor brushes because they do make this line of brushes for other paints like acrylic. So, yes, but I definitely recommend those. Hands down, get you a set. Love them. And last but not least, we are coming down to the paints. Now, again, this is Roy and Lang Nickel Essential line of paints. It comes in 12 different colors for the set that I bought, the set of 12, um, 12 milliliter tubes. And, you know, I don't have a lot of experience to base, you know, a lot on. I just know that in the last couple of months, I have bought a lot of paints um, and I've used a lot in all different categories, kids, students, as well as professionals. As a matter of fact, I just got my very first set of white night paints that uh, arrived today in the mail from Amazon. And if you don't know what White Knights is, White Knights is a water is a um a art company out of Russia. And they make um White Knights professional brand of watercolor paints. And I have watched several reviews and done a lot of reading and when it comes to professional paints, they are highly praised um for being a very great grade of um professional watercolor paints that are reasonably priced and I'm here to tell you they were. So we will be doing a review on those a couple of videos from now. So you be sure to come back um, so that you can partake and, and, and see how things go with that. But as far as the uh, Royal and Lang Nickel paints, keep in mind that they did crack when I put them in the palette. So um, from what, I've read and studied, you can prevent that crackage by using either glycerin or honey. I used glycerin and some of them cracked, some of them didn't. I think the next time that I put these paints out in a palette, I'm going to, or as I refill the paints in a palette, I'm gonna mix honey in to see how that works because I wanna try them both. And of course, I'll be sure to let you guys know how that goes. And in one of the upcoming videos, when we actually, turn two into palette cakes, um, we'll actually use honey so that you guys can do that with me as well. But the paints, they're they're okay. You know, um, they hold pretty vibrant color. They mix really well without getting muddy. And once we learn more or once you read more, you'll learn that single pigment paints tend to make cleaner colors when they when they're mixed. And colors that are made up from more than one pigment being mixed with colors that are made up from more than one pigment can tend to make a more muddy, muted color. But I have to say that although I was not able to, as of yet, obtain the pigment numbers and the pigment information for this paint, I honestly believe that these are like maybe single pigment paints or dyes, single dyes single pigment dyes. Um, they don't have any what's known as granulation or texture, um, pigment texture. Most um, watercolors that are made from a pigment have um, sort of a, a granulation to it um, where you can kind of see the pigment in the paint. These are completely flat. There is no granulation to any of them at all. So that leads me to believe that maybe this paint is made more from a dye or maybe a mixture of dye and just a few pig pigments. Um, I don't believe that there are a lot of fillers in it, meaning that they use a lot of other products to make up the paint, to substitute and stretch it in place of the pigments. And there are a couple of reasons I don't believe that a lot of fillers were used because the color is vibrant, it's not chalky. Um, although it did not, um, run or or bleed i'm sorry bleed is the correct word i'm looking for although it did not bleed right away when water hit it i kind of had to 
play with the color and the pigment and, and, and move it along, still, I think it did a pretty decent job. You know, I must admit, I think the colors are vibrant. Um, they're pretty transparent because, I mean, the ones that had washed, I mean, watered down washes could do for another layer on my color wheel and it really wouldn't hurt anything. Um, so I think that they're pretty transparent. As far as being a great student paint, I'm not sure. I would probably classify them more as a beginner paint. But either way, I think that they're a pretty decent option. And on a scale of one to five, I would have to give them a three and a half. That's right, a three and a half. They're a great budget-friendly paint to start with. You can get Royal and Lang Nickel Essential line of paints from pretty much anywhere, any craft store. Um, in my area, Walmart, Joann's Craft, um, Michael's. Um, they're not at Hobby Lobby, but um, all of these places, and the most convenient place for me is Walmart. Um, you can get them from Joann's and just like with the deal I was telling you on the brushes where you can get them with the 40% coupon, you can get these at Joann's with the 40% coupon if you have a Joann's in your area or if you want to go to joann's.com to order them. Um, you, you can utilize their 40% coupon on the website as well. And again, I was able to get um, 12 tubes of 12 milliliter paint a watercolor artist pad, which we will review their um, paper at a later time. Um, today, I wanted to use this one, especially because I had it on hand. Um, two brushes and a pencil and an eraser, if I'm not mistaken. And it's like $7.97 for that set. And then you use the coupon and get 40% off. So again, none of the products that we have used today are too terribly expensive, especially if you utilize in-store coupons with them and you get them from the right place. However, they did perform really well. I love the brushes. The paper is decent and the paint is pretty decent. I mean, hey, three stars for the paper, three and a half stars for the paint, five for the brushes. I think that's a pretty good, nice gift set to give someone that's starting out into the watercolor. Well, guys, with that said, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I think we've had a really good video today that obtained and had a lot of, obtained a lot of information, gave out a lot of information, maybe learned a lot. Of, at least I hope you guys did. I definitely had fun being able to share um, what, I, what I have learned as I have grown up until the point that I'm at with you guys. Um, forgive me if the video was long. Forgive me if... There is anything that didn't go right in the video. This is my first one, and I promise you I'm going to work really hard on them getting better. But until next time, guys, go ahead, swatch out your paint, do your color wheel. Do it as many times as you need to until you feel that your practice is in. I really enjoyed this. I really thank you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Check out the Thrifty Apprentice Facebook page. I will eventually be starting an Instagram page, but right now, please subscribe, share this video, like the Facebook page, and I'll see you guys later. Bye now.